Hey there, it's Jess Fraser, and welcome to another episode of Your Inner Vitality. I'm calling to all the dreamers out there, the ones wanting to disrupt the usual and make change. We're talking all things self-care, worth, confidence, goals, and the importance of showing up for yourself so you can show up for those dreams and others too. Remember, it's not about the magic that we create together here, but what you do with it outside. So let's continue this conversation at Your Inner Vitality Community Facebook group. The link is in today's session notes. But until then, let's hanker in for another good session. So today's episode is going to be focused on belonging. And of course, we do have a very special guest, Laura Sullivan, to help us with this too. We're going to discuss and we're going to dive into some really great areas about our passion, our well-being, and how it's impacting a healthier life. But before we get into more of those details, honestly, Laura, hello. Thank you for joining us. Give us a little bit about who you are and the kind of impact you are making in this world today. Hi, Jess. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast. I am just honored to be here. And as you mentioned, my name is Laura Sullivan, and my belonging kind of lies with my passion of running. I am a certified run coach and race director as my passion project out of COVID turned into that. And um, I also am a dental assistant teeth whitener and a coach at Orange Theory, as well as not to mention a mama of a crazy toddler. Uh, she just turned <laughs> two. So that's a little bit about me. And um, I, like I said, too, I'm really happy to be here about talking about belonging and finding your passion and your purpose, and more so through the route of physical activity. I remember when we first met. And of course, this was on my adventures across Canada here and doing the Courage to Change tour. And I met up with you in Regina. You had happened to see me at the author signing event there. And I was like, wow, this woman is so charismatic and has such a positive vibe. And I'm so grateful that we've stayed connected since then, because now I would love to introduce you to my tribe of people and be able to make that bigger impact, not just within our little space, but you know, go big or go home, I guess. I don't know. Anyhow, belonging. I read a little bit about your story in when we first kind of got together and connected. And I'd love to kind of hear a little bit of your journey of finding your space and finding this passion, you know, even if it was just through the startup of COVID, but now it's manifested into something really cool, which I think that's the other element is if you're not sure where to go, Ah, we can find that space and it, it's like the, the building blocks as it goes and it sweetens as you continue to allow it to manifest. Absolutely. And I think that when we first met, we just instantly bonded over the dream chasing mentality. Um, mm. We just got to, you know, go big or go home and do what you are really passionate about. So the day I met you, I was coaching at Orange Theory and, you know, I was kind of finishing off and in a rush. But then you're right. There was just some sort of connection there that was like, you know, I need to share my love and my passion with this beautiful human. I was a soccer player growing up. So I had the love for sports and Academics was never really my big thing. After high school, you know, I got a scholarship to play for the university team here in Regina, but I had no idea what I wanted to study. Like, really, I just wanted to play soccer. I loved sports. I didn't continue on with the scholarship and I ended up going a different route, taking my personal training in Calgary, where I wasn't able to actually play for the school team, but I played like a very high competitive money league in Calgary at the time. It was an all women's soccer league and it was awesome. It was just what I needed. It filled my cup and gave me that sense of belonging to be a part of a team. After that, when I came back to Saskatchewan, I realized playing soccer wasn't giving me that same value or that same buzz or adrenaline rush that I really chased. And, you know, everybody was kind of going their own ways, whether it was school, starting families, all those kind of things. But cross training was always running within soccer. So after that, I started picking up running. And 
that's when I found that sense of connection, that runner's high. I ran my first half marathon and I honestly trained terribly leading up to it, but I trained in some sort of uh, aspect thinking that that was the right way, which now fast forward being a run coach, it's really made my whole evolution really come true of you know, finding the people that were once in my spot, feeling lost, looking for their sense of direction, and then being able to find their passion and then do their passion correctly so that they can keep doing it. Yeah. Um, so the running high is really something to chase. And then my story after running some half marathons, I had a bucket list and I thought, I got to run that Boston Marathon. You know, it's the biggest, the best, go big or go home because I got to get to that top. I trained and I went, I had no idea even how to train for a full marathon and what it even entailed behind Boston. So I went in very naive and then I missed my qualifying time by eight seconds. Oh my gosh. Eight seconds. (laughs) So That must have been painful. Yeah. Yeah. And then I found out that was the last run that I could run that year to be qualified for the run. So I had to Mm. wait a whole another year. Oh my gosh. But tell me, you did do it though, did you not? I did. I went for a second attempt and I failed miserably. Okay. Uh, I missed my time by over 20 some minutes. I had come down with a very, very bad like bronchitis, cold, something. And I was like, oh, I'll still try. Mm, no, it's very defeated. Yeah. And I thought, what am I doing with this whole goal? Do Is this something I still truly want at this time? Yeah. But then when I started talking about it, which is, is another important thing to talk about your goals is that I see people light up. Wow, this girl, she's, you know, she's a a go-getter. She's very, very intriguing, inspiring. And then I thought, this can't be the end of my story. I tried to get, I had a goal and I didn't get it. Like what? Like, you know, I just couldn't let that define me. So I went in and I, I got a coach. I trained and I got my qualifying time by over 10 minutes. I was like, yeah, mm -hmm, that's how it's done. (laughs) I then was on this journey. So I, it took me three attempts to get my full marathon time. I took my whole family to Boston. We all celebrated and then we took it all in. And that was just like, my goal was not to run fast at Boston. It was, I went to every news camera and I waved and I was selfieing it up and I was taking pictures and I was high-fiving and I was just doing everything possible to enjoy every second of this accomplishment that I worked so hard for. And then I was like, wow, like I did that. And now when my friends introduced me, oh, this is Laura. She's a runner. She's run the Boston Marathon. And I'm like, oh, okay. Hi, that's me. So then I started to see how people perceive me. And then my, you know, like, how can I be an impact in that world of just being me and chasing my goals? So when I crossed the line at Boston, I saw this uh, beautiful woman. She received this huge medal. And I was like, whoa, like, what's that big, shiny? I need, I need that. (laughs) It It was your six star major marathon medal. So now in the world of marathoning, there's these six world majors where all the big names go, they're qualifiers for the Olympics, they're what you need to know. So there's Boston, Chicago, London, New York, Tokyo, and Berlin. So we've hit six. And so I'm like, oh, well, I need that. So here we are sitting here talking today and I have five of my six major marathons. I'm looking to get one more. And so throughout this journey, I've let that become my story of this is my purpose. And because in COVID, you know, we kind of got locked down, but then there was a beautiful way to share your purpose and your passion of running. And then it became, okay, well, you know, I'm going to release some programs. So it kept me occupied with my personal training background to create programs for runners. And then one step further, create virtual events. And then I started building up, oh, hey, friends, I'm doing these virtual events and I'm going to give you a program and it's going to, you know, give you something to do during this pandemic of this lockdown. And then it just like naturally evolved. Mm. And 
now I'm here with Run Culture Community and I've hired one coach and the two of us have created a community. We offer one-on-one packages. We have a Friday 5K club going, trying to host some events and we're just continuing to naturally evolve. Like nothing really feels forced. And yeah. I think that's, that's what finds that sense of passion and belonging. Mm. Nothing is forced. That on its own, where we want to sit with for a bit too. I also loved the manifesting kind of just naturally evolved as it went. If we were to be honest with ourselves and you were talking about even before this inception, would you imagine yourself to be here in this point in time before all this happened? I don't know if I would have pictured this completely, but to me, if I was like manifesting, this would have been a dream like. Like, you know, thinking that it's yeah. not possible, like that would be so cool if that was my life. Huh. And here I am living this really cool life. Okay. So when you say that, I instantly think of my van life experience because when you talk about goals and dreamers, I was always a dreamer. I'm always a dreamer and I'm definitely heavy on my goals. But the one thing that I never documented in any of my goals or any of my vision boards was van lifing. And I find it interesting because it's always been something that I was like, this would be so much fun and so cool, but I never actually saw it as a realistic opportunity given my current lifestyle and where we were living and being committed to not just like myself and my adventures, but other people's obligations, like my husband's, my daughter's and all of these other things that I'm just like, we couldn't do that. But fast forward, you know, and we go and make these different changes in our lives, whether they are big or small. One thing I would say is I have been working on aligning my life for the last probably eight years. And so it's an, it's a process. And this is what I'm also hearing with yours is it's an evolution and a process as you go through this. And the more that you're honoring the process and working through even the tough stuff, I would say too, it's it's one step at a time. And you don't necessarily have to know exactly where it's going to land you, but it could land you in a space that is so much more than what you anticipated. And I would never have experienced or thought I would be able to experience van life and traveling across Canada and meeting individuals like you who also share that same type of passion. So I feel if you as a listener today, if you're listening to this and you're like, okay, this is great, but where do I start with this? How do we find this passion or how do I start aligning my world and that feeling of belonging? I'd love to kind of like sit there for a minute. And I don't know if you have anything to add to this part. Well, I love how you said like aligning your life and like really checking in with your goals because we hear follow your dreams or follow your heart so much. And it it almost Mm -hmm. seems a little too vague, right? Like, Mm -hmm. you know, or cheesy or fairy tale wise of, I don't know if I could give up all these things and go live in a van. That, yeah. that kind of seems like far fetched, right? But then everything aligns because you kept following your heart. And it comes back to, I guess, yeah, really customizing things to, that are true to you and mm-hmm. being able to constantly evolve and pivot and kind of roll with the punches. Because, mm-hmm. say, we set a goal. And it mm-hmm. doesn't happen. It yeah. doesn't mean that that goal didn't mean anything. But it, you may have taken a couple detours. And then a couple of years down the road, you still succeed in that goal. And it, it comes back. Yeah. It makes it way back. That's one thing that I love about your story is it wasn't an instant success. And it wasn't perfect. And there were struggles. And even after you made several attempts, some attempts were even worse than the others. And given different circumstances, I always find I talk about goals. And it's so fu- it's funny that we find ourselves back into this, even though we're talking about belonging. But if you fail, try again and try, try, try again. And I was just like, certain points, you had even said you questioned yourself. So, how, when we get to that point of questioning ourselves, do we determine it's is something we should move on and not attempt again? Because that may not necessarily be failure. Or what do we do to to move through this and push through? Yeah, that's like a tough one because 
I do like to share my struggles because not every day is perfect. I also find with running too, everybody has their place in time, right? Maybe right now you're super, super busy and running is not in your agenda, but you're always like, oh, I'd love to do that. A lot of people don't pick up their running career until they're much older and their kids are retired and they finally have time to go on like half an hour or hour runs or that kind of thing. So Mm. it really just comes back to, you know, how bad do you want this goal or do you need to reevaluate your goals? Is there... Is there maybe a lesson that you're missing of, I've failed this many times. How do I want to write my story? Do I want to be the person that, you know, tried this many times and moved on and found something new? Or Mm -hmm. do I want to be that person that took 30 attempts and never, ever gave up? You know, I actually wrote a series on regret, specifically on this, because I instantly think of when you say this, the one question that I typically ask myself when I'm in that moment of questioning is, will I regret that I turned away? And there has been times in my life that I'm like, no, I'm actually good. I've made peace with this. I have found something different or my passions redirected, my purpose has pivoted, that I'm okay to walk away from this. But then there are times where I'm like, you know what? There could be an ounce of regret. And I and I say and I say ounce because if there is any ounce of regret that I feel that there's going to be, I'm just like, no, I still got to keep waiting through this. I still have to go through and figure this out. And the beauty of this, and this is the one thing that I also say is, and you hear it all the time, it's it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. The journey is actually where you're going to find those connections and the sense of belonging with yourself and with other people too. Yeah, I really resonate with that regret. And yeah. that's kind of how I look at things too, right? Like, am I going to come back on this and yeah. be really mad at myself or keep yeah. thinking about this? Um, mm-hmm. Or, and, hey, you know what? I'm actually good. <laughs> this didn't align and I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'm not liking this feeling, but. Yeah. Yeah. Now, maybe this is going to kind of send us on a little bit of a side topic, but. When you had mentioned about the journey and the destination, about once we arrive to our destination, because some of my goals have been, okay, well, I would like to get to the Boston Marathon and I ran the Boston Marathon. Well, what's next? You know, it's funny you say that because I was actually thinking that when you're talking about it. And I was like, I wonder how she felt when she actually accomplished it. Because this is an interesting conversation I have with my clients especially when they've had this success. So where did you go with that? And where, where do you think of that now? Well, it's funny because then it was like, okay, well now I need my six majors. And then <laughs> now I'm at five and I'm pro- pro- hopefully going to be getting six soon. And then it's going to be, well, then what's next? I mean, you know, my husband's <laughs> always like, well, now what? Right. Yeah. So I really valued your courage to change journal because mm. I noticed all of my goals are physical. And I wasn't really going towards a little bit deeper into the mental capacity of goals or cherishing things. So Mm. one thing that I've actually found that I've disconnected from is really celebrating these wins. So once I complete a huge marathon, I'm like, okay, what's next? And this journaling that I thank you for (laughs) is that... It's a really allowed me to dive in and be like, girlfriend, show some gratitude. You were just in Berlin running a marathon that people dream of and you're already wondering what's next. So I find that journaling has very much helped me to place myself in the present and Mm. to value this journey that I'm on. And I feel like maybe there's probably never a final destination for me. I'm always going to be reaching for something more. Being able to shift my mindset to appreciate that a lot more than to put that negative context on it that like, well, you're ungrateful. You said something that matches with that earlier in this conversation, where it's like, this isn't my end story. And I was like, yeah, it's not, it never is. It's constantly evolving. And by the way, I just want to like throw in a little bit on this too, is I did not talk to Laura about pitching my journal, by the way, guys, I didn't pay her to do any of that. 
just naturally came up. But I do see the value in acknowledging the journey. And I also think in your story, you also acknowledge this tough times that you're going through because as we're aligning our life, our dream life, it's like you had said earlier too, when you talk about dream life and following your heart, it almost feels like a warm, gushy, but no accountability or real destination. And this is where that sense of belonging doesn't have to be grandioso. It can start in the the tiny steps and it doesn't have to be perfect. You can perfect it and tweak it and adapt it as you go and finding those elements that kind of click in. Like I instantly just thought of a puzzle. If the piece doesn't fit, that's okay. Just keep working through the pieces. You will find something that will fit that space that is just for you. And you had also mentioned that too, about finding it for yourself. And this is where I find a lot of my clients come to me exasperated saying, I've tried everything, you know, and they're like, it doesn't work for me. And you know what? That's okay that it doesn't, but they're trying all these things that society or the mass is saying, this is what's going to work for you. Meditate, journal, exercise, make sure that you get out into nature. There's so many things that they may work for us, but they may not work for you specifically. And maybe crafting is what's going to work for you. Maybe collecting seashells. I don't know, but this is that element of finding that space and those individuals where you can lose your track of time. I wonder, how do your runs feel for you? I just thought of like, do you lose track of time or do you go to a different space in your world when you start running? Depends what time we're running on. Like if I'm doing speed yeah. work, it's like, oh God, here we go. <laughs> Long runs. And when I was really starting out to, into running, they were my time to hang out with me. Whether whether I was listening to a podcast, whether I was listening to music, I was, you know, kind of in charge and in control. And I would always run to like destinations, like mm-hmm. a lot of the time too. So it would be really cool because like I would be like, oh, well, I actually ran to an, a small town today and then ran back. So then I felt like that sense of value. But I do, I find myself in this state of flow that mm-hmm. it's just it's where I need to be. And that uh, to me, when we talk about belonging, like I belong with running, like running is a relationship. So sometimes we break up, sometimes we fight, (laughs) you know, like sometimes we talk dirty to each other. Like, you know, it's not, it's not always like, you know, roses and all those kind of things. My relationship with running, it, it is truly for me. And I've learned a lot working with others that, perception and reality, you know, how you perceive things is not how someone else is going to perceive them. So when you're talking about, you know, some people are saying this isn't working, but then they finally do something and it just clicks and you didn't even yeah. recognize it to them where you're like, oh man, <laughs> if I would have just told you to go craft, <laughs> we would yeah. have been done this process so long ago. <laughs> yeah. But it's just, yeah, it's really to find your perception and how you're valuing things as well too. One thing that I've learned, um, one of my biggest takeaways is that the standard that and the bar that I set for myself, I cannot expect that from others Mm. because I was always finding myself disappointed when I would set this expectation on somebody Because Mm -hmm. this is how I wanted it. And they didn't meet those standards. So that was a big learning process for me, working with others, um, building my dream life and learning the boundaries of what you can control and can't control to find that purpose, right? Like you can't relate or rely on somebody else to find that purpose for you. This is its weight in gold because I've actually just also written an article on this about it starts with us. Belonging is about having that sense of peace with who we are and acceptance and being okay to maybe dance to your own beat. Because when you do it enough, you're going to attract those individuals that also like that beat. Before even this call, we we had chatted about the people pleasing concept, which a lot of people find themselves in that trap. And when you're marching to other beats to appease other people, you're going to attract 
the beat that you're putting out. So when you're not putting that beat that is resonant to you, or in your case, I love when you had said like your state of flow, then you're sending out the wrong messages to the world of what you are wanting to attract, which means it's going to keep you out of that alignment if you aren't showing that true authentic self of yours. So it's like start within and being like, what is it that finds my state of flow? I was thinking of this when you were talking about that state of flow of be creative and be explorative and be that explorer in your own world of figuring out where do you lose track of time? Where do you find that your heart sings the most? Or that a world of expansion happens for you where you're like, I feel and I see endless possibilities. And when I'm in this state of mind, and it's like, that's the space that you want to be honoring. That's your purpose that you want to be bringing to the world. That is what's going to grow for you because the energy is there for it too. Yeah. Because even like my state of flow comes with movement, right? Some people come with stillness, whether you're meditating yeah. or finding that mindfulness, even relating back to running and belonging, you know, not all runners are the same. There's different paces. There's different styles of races. There's trail, there's road, there's running, there's walking, there's a mixture of both. There's clubs for runners that are the slow AF club. So people that <laughs> value a lot of people, oh, I can't run with her because she's too fast. Oh, she's, you know, too competitive. So it's finding your belonging within a different sport. So, you know, if I'm yeah. finding my belonging with running, maybe I'm not aligning with the um ultra marathoners, you know, the ones that are going yeah. 50 plus K, which, you know, that's where their, their beats leading them. And it's not yeah. mine. Yeah. But it probably will be someday. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, now that I'm saying this, I may want to try that too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but see, there's also that element too, of like, it doesn't need to be one stuck space that you're in. And I say stuck, but it doesn't have to be in one compartment. You could have multiples. And I even think of my van life community who I would never have had that community had I not been in that or explored that area of that realm of life. But I also have my coaching practice and the wellness and the mental health component. I have my family. There's so many different sectors in my world where I find elements of belonging in different areas. And they don't always necessarily bleed into one another. They could, but they don't necessarily need to. So you can have multi-passions too. And I think there's individuals like that out in the world where it's just like they can be very focused and very like one thing in their world and that's their main element. Or you could be the multi-passionate individual. I know Marie Folio talks about that all the time. It was just like, you could be the multi-passionate entrepreneur. And I'm like, that's me, right? So that's okay if you have all those elements too, but it's also about making sure you're holding space and honoring those elements as you roll too. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, going back to even wearing those different hats, like in my yeah. bio, when you're asking me, what do you do? And I'm like, oh gosh, here we go. You know, yeah. five of my jobs. And so yeah. it is really maybe our dreamer mentality of that. We can do it all and have it all. And which hat are we going to wear? Mm -hmm. And we're going to wear it to our best capabilities. But some people don't find that same sense of of uh, drive when they start, oh, I have to wear seven different hats where we yeah. thrive off of it, right? So taking it back a step. And then I think also too, once you do find that purpose in belonging is to yeah. be very acceptance, accepting of others while they're trying to find their purpose or their, their passion. Mm -hmm. Because there can be that like envy or sense of jealous of, oh my gosh, I want to be her because she loves running so much and she has a passion and they try so hard to make running their passion and it really just isn't. But then they yeah. love, they find that they love walking, right? So it's maybe finding that empathy towards others while they're chasing their sense of belonging. When you say that, I instantly go to, don't be afraid to stand in your own shoes. And to share maybe what you want or not be afraid to actually go and discover it just because a girlfriend of yours is amazing and loves this doesn't mean that because you don't also do an, are super passionate about it doesn't mean that you're not going to lose that relationship and connection with that person. In fact, that could be the reason why you are attracted to one another because of the differences that you can bring and support and lean into one another with so that when this belonging comes into play, it also doesn't necessarily mean that 
even everybody in your world has to love and enjoy all those things. My husband, he loves cars. My daughter and him can talk cars all day long. It's a different language to me. I love them a lot, but I also love the fact that they can go off and do some of their own stuff and enjoy and have a great time and banter and see which cars are better than others. Whereas me, I'll go off and I'll do my my crafty stuff or my reading of my book and we can still come together. And I think the belonging doesn't necessarily mean that it's only that bubble. I think we're coming up with this as we're talking too. I don't know where you land on that. No, a hundred percent. I feel that too, because yeah. yeah, it goes, it always goes back and it starts with you. Yeah, it does start with us. Yeah, it does. Okay. I don't know what your thoughts are. Like, what are your takeaways on this? Is there anything else we want to tap into before we wrap this beautiful session up together? Um, I'm not sure if there's a ton, but uh, because I feel like we really connected and kind of laid it all down, but just going back to belonging, setting your boundaries and constantly just chasing your dream and Going back to like that saying of living your best life, how that can be very true to each individual. It could almost be like a bit of an assessment to you as the listener is, am I living my best life right now? And if the internal automatic response is no, it's probably that cause to pause. And even what you were saying earlier is like, maybe sit down and journal or have a conversation with a close confidant of yours that you can trust coach even if you wanted, but to help you work through that, to figure out what's the yes element in this point in time of where you're at so that you can touch a bit of that yes. And if it's anything that I know that you've shared with your story and even with any of my goals is it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be able to touch it a lot and a hundred percent of the time in the way that you set the expectation of or the hope and desire, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you cannot still have that You just got to keep working towards it and trust the process as you go through this sense of belonging for yourself. A hundred percent. One of the things that we're looking for more was finding your why and lighting that fire within yourself and trying not to lose that Mm. while you share it. Yeah. If you as a listener are like, I've lost my flame though, just remember you can always find a match and get it started again. You know, whether it's rained for you or you used up all of your matches, it is not the end of that wick for you. It's like, get out there, find that individual you can maybe celebrate that with or give yourself that moment of quiet or still that you were talking about too, Laura, or movement to help reignite that flame for you and be open to whatever comes up in that space for you at that time, whether it ends up being a conversation with a random fellow person working out or someone who decided to visit you at an author signing table where you create a relationship like Laura and I have, you will be amazed where these things can take you. You just have to be open to it. Absolutely. Welcoming opportunities, experimenting with growth and just really not closing yourself Yeah. Now, Laura, where can they get to know a little bit more about you and maybe even join your community or be a part of that in any which way or form? I would absolutely love that as that is one of our main focuses is just to really be welcoming to everybody. Um, Mm. I do have my website up and going. It's runculture.com. Culture is spelled with a K. You can find us on Instagram, Run Culture Community. You can personally follow my account at Laura Sullivan. I'm mostly active on Instagram, but we also do have Facebook groups um, for Run Culture Community and Run Coach Laura. And I do a little bit on TikTok. You can check out my (laughs) sweet (laughs) dance moves. Um, And basically, that's kind of my main channels to connect with myself and my other coach, Andrea Amyot. I will have all of that information for you guys in the show notes too. So it's a quick click to be able to connect with Laura and her community too. Laura, thank you so much for being here. And guys, stay tuned because she'll be in our newsletters sprinkled throughout. And I'm sure in other areas of her community and ours too. So this isn't going to be the last time that we hear of Laura Sullivan in our world.
Thank you so much, Jess. Enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah, you too. Do you like what you hear? Be sure to subscribe to this podcast and give it a five-star rating on Apple. Now remember, the conversation doesn't stop here. Be sure to join us in our Facebook group, Your Inner Vitality Community. We would love to hear from you. What were the golden nuggets that you took away from today's discussion? And more importantly, what actions are you going to take? Now, if you're also not a subscriber to the monthly newsletter, Finding My New Normal, make sure you also subscribe today. Don't miss out on any of the good stuff happening within this supportive community. Both of these links are available in today's show notes. And thank you again for joining us and be sure to stay tuned for the next episode of Your Inner Vitality. Remember, it's your time.